Life can change in an instant. For many wheelchair users, the struggle to push forward is a daily challenge. After years of development and countless prototypes, we created Rib Grips, the revolutionary wheelchair hand rim covers with built-in ribs for ultimate grip and comfort. No more slick surfaces, no more heat burns, just pure, reliable grip. Rib Grips, empowering you to push forward with ease. Rib Grips, get a grip on your freedom. Discover the difference. Visit ribgrips.com and use promo code GRIP today. You just found the perfect product that helps with staying cool during hot summer runs. No more gross warm water. Stay cool with this product from Gear Handle. This hydration tube cover helps keep your water cool and easily accessible. Stay hydrated during those long summer runs or even delay from freezing in the winter. Plus, they're compatible with various brands of water bladders and come in various colors. Visit GearHandle.com and use promo code H2O today. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. This is Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Central Texas Life. And I'm so happy to have Kaylee Caperton Hingdon with us today. I've been knowing you girls since you were a little girl. A lo- yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> a long time. and just happened to run into you here yes. at the uh, Rogue Media Studios on the 21st floor of the Alaco <laughs> Building, I might add. Um, such a wonderful location. But, um, yeah, you were here to do No Waco yes, yes. podcast. And I had, I told you, I had just seen on Facebook your new endeavor and had been wanting to have you on the podcast uh, here, Central Texas that. Life, because... I mean, you have you have spent your life here mm-hmm. in Central Texas and uh, accomplished so much, done so much in the entertainment Thank you. world. I uh, went on IMDb mm-hmm. and uh, Googled your name, and there, <laughs> there you pop up with all kinds of stuff. Of course, I remember um, when you did Color Me. Color Me that, You. Yes. Yeah, that, the movie. That was yes. in uh, 2017. You did music for it. Yes. So, I mean, bottom line is you, you're an actor, but a singer. I knew you first as yes. a singer. Yes, yes. In fact, I think I was the, the judge of a little kind of a talent thing. Do you I remember think that's that? right. Was, was that when West? I was eight? Oh, no. Oh, gosh. In West. But, but it was you, Holly Tucker, uh-huh. and um, Brianna, Brianna Picard. Picard. Oh, Picard. awesome. Yes. yes. That was a long was time ago. Right. And you were all like, you know, about that big. <laughs> I, we were probably, what, 11? Maybe 10 or 11. Was, that was 20 years ago. <laughs> Well, I mean, anyway, it was like 15 years ago. But <laughs> vocally, I mean, you were all just so, so strong. And, and uh, anyway, it was, I, I don't know that I could, I think they asked me to coach or something. Like, I got nothing. To do. These kids are need to be coaching me, which kind of brings us to what you're doing now. Yes. And uh, with your wealth of experience, Kaylee, and what you've done, um, you're, you're sharing that now with the Yes. Uh, you know, I, I had a, a career in music and film and writing, and, you know, I, I loved it. And, and a big part of my life, my mom was part of all of that, you know, and she passed in 2020. And so at the time, I was like, you know what, I need a break. I need to figure out who I am because so much of my identity was <laughs> was that relationship with my mom. Right. And, you know, we, and they were so supportive. Oh, absolutely. Uh, of, Always of have everything been. everything you were doing. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, I would tour and stuff, and my mom would go with me yeah. because, you know, hanging out with Ryder and, you know, they'd be backstage. And when I'd come yeah. off stage, yeah, it was them. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was hard to, you know, figure out what life was going to look like without my mom. Mm. And, um, so I took a couple years away and did some photography, which was really fun because it kept me, you know, doing creative oh, stuff. That's and interesting. It was, yeah. it was really fun. And, um, I, I got to photograph, you know, a lot of families and then, um, some, uh, uh, musicians and all kinds of different things and actually really got into sports photography, which if you know me at all is really funny because I know nothing about I grew up knowing nothing about sports besides baseball and so then I finally I had been having these dreams on and off which sounds so silly I feel like Joseph and uh, you know having having these dreams of of being a choir director and I was like no no I will not be a choir director yeah and I mean like up there on (laughs) in my dreams and I was like no 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 that's not that's not it and so I kept having these dreams, and it kind of changed throughout. And then it's like one morning I woke up, and I was like, I've got it. I've got exactly what I want to do. Now I just have to put it on paper and figure out how to do it. And so from that, that's when the Vocal Academy of Waco was born. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is, this is going to be your first 
full semester? Or yes. have you been doing? Yes. So this, so this is brand spanking. Yes. Year. And actually, we're still taking um, in some applicants because, uh-huh. um, you know, it's it's a it's a niche thing that you've got to find. And, you know, right. like we're in no rush to, you know, close down and say, you know, we're not taking mm-hmm. anyone else. Because it, the nice part is, like, I, I have um, – two students right now that are completely polar opposite. I have right. a, a 13 year old girl who is, um, you know, just like, like me, like really wanting to start performing and, mm-hmm. you know, just kills it at the national anthem, like absolutely phenomenal. Oh, good, good. And then I have a, um, older gentleman that plays blues and rock and, you know, has been doing great on reverb nation. And he's like, maybe I should, you know, rebrand and, and kind of, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, totally opposite, but you know, the nice part is, no different than film or music, mm-hmm. you know, there's no wrong age to start. You know, I, I was explaining that to them the other day. I was like, there's no wrong time to start into, right. you know, musicals, film, whatever it may be. Because, you know, when you're little, you play the little kid, then you play the big sister, then you play the teenager, then you play the adult, then you play the mom, then you play the grandma. So there's no, you know, there's no, it's too late for me to start, you know, mm-hmm. and that's what I love is music, you know, uh, transcends across all ages and nations and languages and everything. So that's what we're working on, you know, really connecting. So now, when you've done a, speaking of the acting, you've done a lot of acting. Are you just kind of all right? I'm done with this, or would you take a role if it came up? I I might. It just kind of depends. <laughs> the nice part about film um, is that you know that that movie actually only took like two and a half weeks to shoot. Oh my it goodness. was yeah, and and it was it was so nice. So yeah. you really like <laughs> you only have you to really do can focus. Yeah, it's you know. it's the post production that takes so long, mm-hmm. and so you know going into the studio and doing that stuff was was what took so long, and then you know the edits it comes through you know edit seven times before you finally get you know the final product or more even and so it takes you know months to get there and then um so yeah you know I might it would be fun um and then you know I I love the opportunity to be able to support you know all the other people that are coming up in in music Mm -hmm. and film and all these things it's been so amazing to watch you know all of that well you can give them such good advice because you've been there and done that (laughs) Would it's you, been enjoyable, you, for sure. You, I mean, have you had an agent? Have you? Um, was that the so, kind of area you might want to get into as well? So, you know, growing up, um, we interviewed a couple different managers, and um, because you're you're interviewing them as much as they're oh, interviewing yeah, of you, right. and um, you know, it just none of the it it didn't. It didn't seem right. And I was like, you know, I, we interviewed one, and she was this real spicy, you know, Italian, real um, <laughs> vivacious, um, yeah. you know, go-getter. And I was like, Mom, you know, I'm just – I'm not like that. Like, I don't present myself that way. I'm real, you know, laid back and whatever. And and then we met another guy, and he seemed kind of skulky. And I was like, mm, no. I'm not getting – you know, not not there. And so no, – no. And yeah, that's the hard. You're good on that kind <laughs> of thing. Yeah. And so my mom was like, you know, I think we can handle it. And then yeah. when we get to a point when we can't handle it, then we'll look. And we never – got to the point where we couldn't handle it ourselves Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and honestly I really enjoyed handling myself because it gave me more opportunities for relationships you know I got to know so many more people because there wasn't a middleman taking care of all that that. yes and so you know I I really enjoyed um that now in the film industry it's a little bit different and in the they're kind of scouting out Yes, and finding, finding roles and and things. you kind of want an agent in that because mm-hmm. they're the ones that have the connections that go, hey, we need you know this part or this guy or right, this girl or right. whatever you, you know. You would fit this role. Yeah, and so it's a little bit different. But for music, you know, as long as you're making those relationships and um, really you know putting yourself out there and getting heard and you know working towards those things and playing, you know, mm-hmm. you're 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 able to do it yourself until you're really you know getting overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. When you did the photography, have, have you thought at all about maybe doing some filmmaking, too? Oh, gosh, no. No, that's not, you're not interested in <laughs> No, that. I know my limits in that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I just don't, you know, there's, that's a thing that, like, I just don't have. I don't have that. Like, I loved doing uh, photography, but mm-hmm. no, behind a camera, gosh, no, that's... Mm. That was like way <laughs> over my head. Well, it's good there are people that are people that are doing. Um, yeah. Now you spent some time, I, I believe, in Nashville. Yes, and that, that's where you met our friend Dave Ennis. Yes, I think, yes, and uh, Adrian. So, yes, uh, tell wonderful. me about that that connection so, there. So it's funny because I've known Dave. I think I was probably around 15 or so when I met him. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, we we played um, a show at the Wild Horse Saloon. And um, with that, it was Restless Heart and I believe Black Hawk 
and um, I played, and um, I don't remember who all else, but it was an amazing show. Uh, that sounds like quite a lineup. And yeah. and at the time, it was for a company that was going to launch and kind of work on being like a independent version of iTunes. Mm-hmm. And um, it, I, I don't know, like I think they kind of ended up doing something different and going in a different direction. But mm-hmm. that's what the show was for. So it was amazing. Like that was a, a huge show for me because I was. 15 or 16 at the time. Wow. And, yeah. you know, meeting Dave. Dave is one of the nicest people is, I've ever so met generous. in my life. I mean, in oh, everything. In a- absolutely. Everything, yeah. And the funny part is we, um, I actually, I think I knew Adrian. I knew them when they started dating. So, like, <laughs> really? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> my mom and I love to shop. So, we would go to this store called Levy's. Mm-hmm. And um, it was this incredible, like, imagine Dillard's, but everything is, like, um, boutique-y so oh, like really curated. Uh, oh yeah and so like all the people that you know are going to play at cmt and cma and acm like they mm-hmm. go there to get fit right because they have you know great performance clothes and stuff that are unique and mm-hmm. they would tailor everyone and you could go in and drink wine while you're you know getting tailored oh yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah. yeah. so very... we spent you know we spent some time there and um adrian was there yeah. and so she helped me pick out outfits for years and that's like, and then they oh. started dating. So it was just kind okay. of this like full circle thing. And, that you know, is neat. but they are such a huge blessing in my life. I mean, I know. they're just and now they're here wonderful Lego. people, I mean, it's just which awesome. is shocking. And, Isn't you know, that funny? yeah, I hadn't really talked to him for a while. And then I, I don't even know out of the blue, somehow I figured out they were in Waco and I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, yeah. oh, it's so great. Yeah. So. Of course, he's playing every Friday night at the Boulevard yes. Steakhouse. And oh, that's one amazing. Saturday month at Maurice. Okay. So, yeah. He's doing a lot of playing and I've been able to perform with him so oh, that's wonderful just, anyway yeah it's you know he just really brings that nashville oh. thing to oh yeah Waco, you know and i'm fascinated I mean, just with insanely all that. talented insanely oh, yeah. talented oh yeah you know no, no kidding no and kidding. and just so smooth um but no speaking of marie's also we've partnered with marie's and so our artists as they keep developing and learning more music we're mm-hmm. gonna play um there like every couple of weeks and then right. we've got some shows at union grove and um the Waco Hippodrome. I'm uh, working on getting one booked at the Will, and um, and then at Cultivate Seven Twelve. So we're actually going to be getting our artists out and playing you as much as we can. Are. Yes. You know, and just think how many. I mean, you're rattling off all these names that weren't here. Yeah, oh, oh <laughs> not, absolutely. Not that long ago. Yeah. You know, it's really amazing yes. how the live music scene has changed. It has. Waco. It has so much. And, you know, the, there's a there's an art to playing in your hometown, but not being the hometown band. Yeah. So, you know, you have to kind of find that groove of like, you know, how much do you want to play out that isn't too much? And so, you know, and, and you know, how to branch out even to Belton, Temple, Dallas, mm-hmm. Austin. Mm-hmm. And I encourage my, my students to keep playing. Like, you're welcome to play your shows outside of what we're doing and if you have to miss one of our shows that's totally fine to play your own so you know I I love that they're they're uh branching out and a big part that that I work on with them is um different genres because um you know your your voice alone is an instrument Mm -hmm. without a guitar without piano without anything you know you can fine-tune your voice and you can change it so much across genres and so that's what I really am working on teaching is you know there's there's your country tone there's your jazz tone there's your you know musical theater they all sound so different different very different and so that's one thing like I I sent out my first assignment for some of my students and was like all right so what I want you to do because they're both guitar players I said okay you're going to record your song and you're going to leave it on your voice memos, and then you're just going to sing along with it. I don't want you to play because I don't want you to hide behind that. You know, I want you to be able to mm-hmm. fully focus on your voice, on your voice. as your instrument. Right. And because your playing is fine. Like, I'm not worried about your playing. You know, that that comes, yeah. and it's no mm-hmm. big deal. But your voice, like, you can't hide that. So, whereas you can, you know, if you mess up a chord in a show, no one's going to really notice unless you've got a great, you know, musician that goes, oh, they, they no, miss no. that. Yeah. But, no, you know, if I go flat or I go sharp, oh, everybody's like, it. oh, oh <laughs> you know. Hear it right away. And so that, that was my point of, like, we have to get your voice to where you're more comfortable with your voice even mm-hmm. than you are with your instrument. So, yeah. you know, and that's that's a thing that, you know, not many people know how to do when you're mm-hmm. you're hiding behind, you know, something else. So that's mm-hmm. one reason. Um, but, you know, during shows they'll they'll either play or I'll have someone accompany them or, you know. But we're going to do lots of different things. Um, our first show is at Marie's 
um, on the 24th of September. Okay. And then we have another show, which is like 60s, 70s, 80s. So this is going to be multiple students? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Multiple students, multiple genres. We're going to be doing lots of different things. Oh, that's fun. You know, it's funny. You you talk about guitar. I remember I would be at Kenny Frazier's <laughs> yes. house every Tuesday for a little jam session. And there's a picture of you <laughs> with your guitar right on the door every time oh I walk my out. God. So, I mean, I know you must have studied with I did, the I amazing, did. You know, wonderful I, Kenny. I, I, and that's the thing, like, that I, I try to so um, – not take for granted is that, you know, I got to be raised with incredible musicians. Yeah. You have Dick Gimble who taught me mandolin and, um, and I, I didn't play very long, so don't give me too much credit, but, um, and I was probably like, like I was probably the most pain in the butt student <laughs> he ever had. So I apologize for that, but I learned a lot from him. <laughs> and then Kenny, yes, I drove Kenny crazy. Um, he was always like, Kaylee, you would be so good if you just practice. And I, I was know. like, <laughs> he would tell me that too. I was, I was think, his stunning failure. <laughs> As a student, I'm afraid. I yes. said, you know, my now, I just can't do yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, oh, I know. And so I took from him from, you know, age 12 to yeah. probably 19 but I sure or so. I was sing with him playing. I mean, oh, I, he's I amazing. And I, I got to play with um, Johnny Gimble and Dick and Kenny yeah. out singing. And that was because he made me learn how to do jazz and Texas swing right, songs. Right. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of my point in teaching is like the more genres and music that you have memorized and know, the more opportunities you're going to be able to get up and sing. Even if right. you're out at a restaurant and, you know, it's some random thing and, then, you know, you may hop up and go, hey, by any chance, do you know this song? Can I hop up there and sing? It, you know, it's that happens oh, all yeah. the time. Yeah. So you know, the more stuff that you're memorizing and keeping in your brain, the, the more opportunities mm-hmm. you have. So mm-hmm. you know, that's again, like it goes back to Kenny. Yeah. You know, he he taught me so much, and to just keep learning, keep growing, yeah. and oh, I'm so grateful miss, for that. I miss him so much. Oh, well, you started uh, early in musical theater. Yes, early, I was nine. So. Nine. Yeah, yeah, you were young and and did a lot of shows. Yes. And of course, uh, Waco Civic has mm-hmm. got so much going on for yes. kids. It's yes. really amazing mm-hmm. the opportunities that, that uh, younger kids mm-hmm. have to kind of fall in love yes. with that whole world. Uh, did you have a favorite show? Ooh, that, that's hard. Um, so I, I grew up in the Waco Civic Theater and the Waco Children's Theater. I did both. Yeah. And um, I think my favorite musical that I was in would have to be Children of Eden. Hmm. And that is um, Stephen Schwartz, I believe. Um, and and it's it's kind of like, um, like he took the story of Adam and Eve and Noah and kind of put his own twist on it, <laughs> really? which is crazy. But, like, yeah. the music is beautiful. Oh, wow. And it was so creative. Like, there's a song just um, that they're singing about, you know, Adam naming the animals. And oh, so, yeah. and you have all these people crawling across the stage in different, yeah, you know, animals, costumes. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really fun. And so oh. I got to, I got a, a bigger role in that. And then the other one would be uh, Wizard of Oz. I played Dorothy. That was Did like you? on my bucket list of like yeah. the one role, you know, I really want to play because as a kid, I had every size ruby red slippers. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, yeah, got you to do were that, at, for that at China <laughs> Spring, which was really cool. Yeah. And then the other one would be Secret Garden. I played the the lead in Secret Garden when I was 10. And um, that was that was fun. Yeah, Learning how to do a British show. accent at the age of 10 is yeah. my brother still makes fun of me for that. He goes, Dickon, what's the key to the dough? Dickin. And I'm like, OK, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and as a songwriter, I mean, that's a whole nother uh, aspect of your career, yes. Um, but you've you've done. I understand the theme song for the Texas Rangers and the mm-hmm. National Guard Youth Foundation. Yes. And so how did how did you even get that opportunity? <laughs> I mean, how how does that even I happen? You know. Um, okay, so this is just a very funny story. Um, the National Guard Youth Foundation. So I don't know if you remember MySpace, but oh, I'll, oh let me take you back. Um, <laughs> so we went and or I was on MySpace and this lady just happened to message us out of the blue and was like, hey, I'm in charge of this um, National Guard Youth Foundation gala in Washington, D.C. Um, would you ask your mom if she would maybe, you know, consider you coming up and playing for us? Because at the time on there, oh, I had uh-huh. a song that I had written called Where There's a Wall. And the, it was like, around it, through it, ain't nothing to it. Where there's a wall, there's a way. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I just love the, you know, positivity of that. Right. And these are all, you know, young students. And because um, it's a high school dropout program, which is oh. an amazing program. Yeah. And um, and it's all over the U.S. And so, <laughs> and my mom was just like, you know, reading this going, um, is this real? Like, do we know? Yeah, you know? I know, yeah. And so, crazily, a couple months later, I went and played <laughs> um, 
at their gala, and um, and it was amazing. Like they, so they do it during when. Um, ooh, let me see if I can get this right. The s- governors or senators are all there from like all over the U.S., mm-hmm. and so that way they can get them there, and and uh, because it's it's funded by both the state and the government, so um, they want you know all of those guys to know about it, so right. they can bring more um, recognition to it and, mm-hmm. and more campuses, mm-hmm. and so. Um, Anyways, I went up and played there, and then, um, you know, just, I, I loved it, and they, you know, we just built this amazing relationship and started, um, they would have me come sing at all of their stuff, and um, I, it was cool because I got to meet, like, the senator of Louisiana, and then working with four- and five-star generals across all of the militaries oh, wow, yeah. at, or branches, and, you know, it was just amazing, mm-hmm. and um, it was it was so cool, and they were like, you know what, we need a theme song, and so we... I wrote this song with um, Billy Austin and Dave Robbins called Red, White, and Beautiful. And it was it was oh. so cool. It was just an amazing experience. And then from that, the, the, the um, uh, head, head national guard, I can't remember what he's called, the chief, um, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, I believe it was General Grass. He said um, that they, that the national guard didn't have an anthem. And oh, I was okay. like, because at the time, like, they hadn't yet become a branch branch of their own. Right, and right. now they are an equal branch to mm-hmm, all the others. Mm-hmm. And so um, they were like, yeah, we don't we don't have an anthem. And I was like, oh, well, I'd love to write you one. So we yeah. wrote um, Always Ready, Always There. And um, it was so funny because, like, uh, in the paperwork for all of that, the government can't accept a gift when you're like, oh, yeah, this song is for you guys. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, but we can't accept that. And then they're also like, but we also can't buy it. So you're just kind of stuck in this, like. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so um, so basically how it happened was, like, each state had to individually adopt it as their uh, anthem. I see. Yeah. yeah so it's, Pro- it's kind of funny. A, yeah. Some some legislative <laughs> Exactly. Act, you know, it, it was it was like. Um, That's funny. Sure. <laughs> So, no, that was, and that was really cool. We I got to, you know, play that at different things. And they had me fly up and um, sing the national anthem at a Washington Nationals game. And, oh, wow. Yeah, it yeah, was, it was really fun. cool. And yeah, I, I saw your former yeah. colleague, Holly yes. Tucker, just yes. recently I, at a I, At the Rangers, Rangers game, game, right? Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. And yeah. so um, it was, it was the cutest thing because I got to go and um, my son went with me. So we flew up and, mm-hmm. and, um, I have a picture, and it's the coolest picture. He's on the ground in, like, you know, just a, a silly little, like, striped shirt, navy shorts, and a ball cap. And uh, he's playing with a navy blue angels toy. Oh, yeah. And there's four four-star generals above him looking down at <laughs> looking him. Looking down at and him. And I have, like, I snapped the oh, picture. My. And it's so funny because obviously you can't hear it. But they were all, like... They were arguing over what branch of the military he was going to be in. And I was like, oh, my goodness, y'all. Oh, good. <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, he's probably going to be on the baseball field. So it was cute. It was that, it was a sweet funny. memory. So, oh, that, yeah. that's awesome. Well, you you uh, have not closed off your uh, enrollment. Yes. So you are willing to. Yeah, absolutely. To ta- and, you're, and you're kind of. The, the age is pretty, yeah, so, pretty flexible. Yes. I mean, as long as you're, you know, really wanting to have a career in music and mm-hmm. start performing, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm here for you. You know, I'm, I'm happy to. And there are opportunities, obviously. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. And the cool part is, you know, I, I feel like music has become um, much more important to people. Like, they're really mm-hmm. starting to notice. And I think that, um, you know, COVID and everything with having like having all this time on your phone, people really got to like figure out what kind of music they like and Mm -hmm. how to find it became more accessible. And so, you know, that's really helped um, musicians nowadays is to be able to, you know, reach out social media, Instagram, TikTok, all of that stuff. So, you know, it's, it's really made a difference. And then the restaurants and, you know, the coffee houses that are adding music there, that just helps. So I'm excited. I think we're at a great place. Oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited to hear about all this. Um, I'd like to end these visits with a little questionnaire, similar <laughs> to the one the late, great James Lipton would use on Inside the <laughs> Actor's Studio. Um, what is your favorite word, Kaylee? Oh, my favorite word. Oh, that's a re- Can you ask a songwriter that question? That's a hard one. Um, that, like, my, my head is just spinning. Um... 
I, I, the one that I've been thinking of a lot lately is um, is bittersweet. <laughs> Oh, and really? so, yeah, That's because, you know, there's a lot of a lot of that has um, come about in my life. Like, uh, it's funny because I when I was, I believe I was 12, um, I could be wrong, maybe 14. One of my albums, I had a song on there called Bittersweet. And so we named oh. the album Bittersweet. And it's funny because like throughout life, you go through all of these different things. And that is that is such a word that describes so many things because yeah. you know that balance of like you know there's mm-hmm. hard things and there's good things and, there's and there's, good things. Yeah, yeah and you know so everything is just a little bit bittersweet yeah. so That's i good. really like that one what is your least favorite word oh gosh <laughs> Nothing was going to be a test. I know. I, I yeah. I'm, I feel. I'm like you know. I'm feeling the pressure here. Mm-hmm. My least favorite word. Um. I, you know, probably my. <laughs> this is going to be a funny one. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, talent. Really? Yes. Because, and it's not the word or how it's said that's bothered that bothers me. It's that I think the definition is what. I struggle with is like, you know, cause there's, you know, there's natural talent and then there's skills. And so people, a lot of times will say, Oh, you have this big talent. And I'm like, no, those are, those are skills you learn. Anybody can learn those skills. You know, right. there's very few things that you can't learn. Uh-huh. So I think that, and that's across the board, whether it's sports or, you know, film, music, whatever it may be, any job, there's skills and then there's talent. And that the difference between those things is, it's confusing no, sometimes. That, that's true. I've never really thought about it. But that <laughs> now, is true. now you get to live with that one now too. I'm, I'm that's right. Now that's in my head. What turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Oh my goodness! You know, um, I've been really working on mindfulness lately, um, which is you know, I, I'm entering my 30s, so now you know, trying to I slow still, my, myself. My head's blown over yeah. That. Oh, You're trying still to trying to slow myself. Years old in my head, but. and you know. So. And, and, you know, with, with three kids, you know, there's a lot of balance and, um, but now, no, as far as creativity, like it's something that just helps me live. I mean, you know, and I've always been that way, you know, it's whether it was writing songs or coming up with music or, um, you know, painting, drawing, whatever that may be, you know, for my kids, like it's drawing and they, they will sit and draw. You can't get my, my daughter to sit down and watch a movie, but she will draw whatever, you know, she can. And my son carries a sketchbook everywhere he goes. So we're constantly creating things. And I love that because, you know, I, I just finished, um, reading the book Captivating by Stacey and John Eldridge. And it talks a lot about, um, how, beauty and beautiful things are God's gift to us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and one thing my mom always said was who you are is uh, is God's gift to you and what you become is your gift to God. And so, you know, (laughs) she was amazing. And so, you know, just, I try really hard to, um, create something beautiful every day Mm -hmm. or to really, notice something beautiful every day whether that's walking outside or whether it's you know my son making noise because he's just one and you know making cute little noises or you know whether it's um you know my other kiddos playing sports or you know riding a bike for the first time you know just things like that that are beautiful Mm -hmm. and you know they they help heal things in your body and and you know so that's one thing that really is is something when you search for beautiful things, I think it really helps you to stay creative. Yeah. 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 Well, then what turns you off creatively or spiritually or emotionally? Um, you know, just the negativity of things. Yeah. Um, and, and putting yourself in a box. You know, you have to remember as a creative person that you don't have limitations. You don't have boundaries, really. You can just keep creating. And that's one thing I I tell my students is like, don't put yourself in a box of like, I only sing this genre. I only do this. I only can wear this. Like, I am only this person. Like, I think, as you know, and maybe it's the generation before me or or maybe it's just the way people think in general is like, I feel like we constantly have to put labels on things. And it's Mm -hmm. like, stop, don't do that. Like, you don't put yourself in a box. You know, you can be all of these different things. And, you know, because when I look at my life, I go, you know, I'm raised on a ranch, grew up singing, 
um, you know, very creative and, you know, part hippie, part cowboy. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, there's no box like, right. you know, and, but then again, like, you know, I go to the gym and then, you know, and, and there's all of these funny things that when you, you know, put a person together and you look at all those different things, it's just a culmination of, you a know, a thing. Individual. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So again, just, you know, don't put yourself in a box. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite sound? My favorite sound, ooh, I, you know, if I could play the violin or the fiddle, I mm. would absolutely do it. But I tried one day for like twenty minutes, and <laughs> it sounded like a cat was dying, oh, yeah, and I was like, "Well, someone that's, learning the that's violin." That's that. Not, oh, it was terrible. Not, not for the faint of heart. No, <laughs> no I, I, I didn't want to put me or my <laughs> parents through that pain. So, but I love listening to it. Like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I could listen to that all day long. Okay, yeah. well, then your your least favorite sound. <laughs> oh. Ooh, you know, there's nails on a chalkboard. Yeah, yeah, there's, that um, comes to mind. oh yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, those those horns at games oh. that they do. Oh yeah, oh Ooh, yeah. It's terrible. The air horn. Thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. What what <laughs> other profession? I mean, you've done a lot of mm -mm. things in your young life. What what other profession would you like to have, try, have tried, or maybe yet to try? Um, honestly, natural medicine. Um, really? Yes, I, I studied it some um, growing up because um, my mom had cancer and and did everything with um, homeopathy and natural yeah. medicine right. instead of you know doing chemo and everything else. So I studied it on and off. I at age seventeen, I actually got my certification to be a homeopathic consultant. I was the youngest one on record to do it mm -hmm. and was able to vaccinate like animals and really? kids. And yeah, yeah. it was interesting, but it's, it's homeopathic. So it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you know, I, I love understanding, um, you know, natural care and, and, um, stuff like that. That's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> like I said, hippie and cowboy. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you, okay. Oh, uh, what job do you know you would not want? Oh, I'll stay away from that. Thanks. Um, what you know, what my husband does, he does. <laughs> no, and, and I mean that because like he and I are both very creative people, but in totally different ways. Uh -huh. Um, so he he does like computer graphics, and oh. he's very engineer minded, very logic, mm -hmm. and you know we are opposite. Like I, you know, everything I do is emotionally, you know, invested yeah, and yeah. creative, and he's like, uh. There's no rhyme or reason yeah. to what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, it drives this him crazy. Not making sense. And and you know he'll he can sit behind his computer and do all of that stuff. And I love it because like I I love seeing you know the creative side where he's coming up with all yeah. of these amazing graphics oh, yeah. and things. That's and I'm like creative. I couldn't I couldn't do that. Like yeah. that's it's hard. <laughs> well, one last question: What do you want to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gate? <sighs> well done. You know I you you used the tools that I gave you. And you didn't waste them. That's really what I want to hear. And, you know, you spent time creating beautiful things, and that's what I asked you to do. Yeah. And you're sharing your knowledge with students. So tell everybody again how they can reach you. Um, so you can find us on Facebook or Instagram, the Vocal Academy of Waco. Um, or you can you can text or call um, or email. Uh, my number is 254-230-6736, and I'm more than happy to talk with you about how everything works, um, you know, and, and what, you know, what all we're doing in in the course of a year and you know i'm i'm just really excited well, but if you have that you know i want to be in the music business i want to you know play shows be on stage mm -hmm. i'm your guy you're you're <laughs> the one well i i appreciate so much I, i'm so happy to get and to catch you up with you having me i it's so appreciate been too that long, i know and i i'm I just happy to have gotten to it to yes. visit with you and to hear about this new yes. adventure yeah, thank in your you. life. Caitlin. And thank you for the support. You know, thank that you. has been the biggest part is, you know, from having that support all across Waco for mm -hmm. so many years. Like when I really decided I wanted to do this, I feel like, you know, people were like, I, yeah. I, we're here to help. Yeah. And uh, I'm so grateful you, for that. You'll, you'll kill it, girl. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kaylee. Thank you. Again, Thanks. Kaylee Higdon. And uh, we're glad you've been with us. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next time on Central Texas Life. <laughs> Bye-bye. Central Texas Life with Ann Harder is part of the Rogue Media family. Be sure to check out our other shows at roguemedianetwork.com. Please rate this show five stars on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.
Are you a podcaster? Let's talk podcast hosting. Are you tired of your current podcast host? Need real support in a community that gets it? At Rogue Media Network, we offer top-tier podcast hosting services to help you thrive. From hosting and distribution to dedicated support, we've got you covered. Starting as low as $25 a month. Join our community of passionate podcasters today. Contact us at hello at roguemedianetwork.com.